This is video two. You can find it in your um, 4A packet starting on page four. We're going to talk about frequency tables and graphs today. So on page four, you can see that there are three problems of the day. I'm going to have you do number one and three on your own. You can pause the video and try those questions on your own. We'll go over those in class tomorrow. Um, otherwise, I'm going to do number two. So number two says, on a science test, John scored 82 one time, 85 six times, 90 seven times, and 95 four times. I know that that's 18 total. I already totaled that up. Find the mean and the median. So I'm going to put them in order, add them all together, and divide by 18 to get my mean. And I'm going to put them in order and find the middle from either end, 9 from either end, to find my median. So the numbers are 82 one time, 85 six times. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 85s, uh, 97 times, oh, hope I can fit that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 95 four times, 1, 2, 3, 4. So again, I'm just going to count to make sure I have 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So yes, I did do that correctly. My median is exactly between those two 90s, which are exactly the same. So I don't have to add them together and divide by 2. I'm going to get 90 anyway. So my median is 90. My mean, if I add those all up, which I already did, I got 1,602 divided by that 18 gives me a mean of 89. So when I have an even number of pieces of data, I'm going to have two middle numbers. If they're not the same, you have to add them together and find their average, but they were the same. The median's 90. The mean is 89. So go ahead and do number one and three. We'll go over those in class. On to the next page. So page five talks about frequency tables, which we did a little bit yesterday. Um, and you're going to see them again. So frequency is the number of times that an event occurs. A frequency table is the kind of table that shows the number of times each item of the data appears. The range is the difference between the greatest and the smallest number in the data set. The scale contains all the numbers from the set. It can be a little bit less than the smallest data point and a little higher than the smallest data point, but you don't want it to be too big. The interval separates the scale into equal groups of data numbers. And the data is the raw information or what you gathered, for instance, in your survey. So the weights of the modified wrestling team, and this is, you know, just a created problem. I don't know if it's this year's wrestling team or not. So I'm going to put this information into a frequency table and then draw a histogram of the weights of the modified wrestling team. So the range, my highest weight is 129 pounds. And my least weight was 68, so their range is 61. The range is 61, highest minus lowest. The scale, um, I'm going to probably start at 60 and go up to 129 or 130 um, for my histogram. So the scale is a little bit smaller than the lowest point. And going a little higher than the highest point, my scale will end on 130 on my histogram. So that's why I'm choosing 130 and not 129. 
I'm going to count by tens. So my interval is 10. So I'm going to put the weight of these wrestlers into um, groups of 10. I'm going to count by tens, starting with my smallest, which was 60 to 69. That is 10 data points. So 70. I don't want to have any overlap. So I can't say 60 to 70 and then 70 to 80 because then 70 would go in two places. So I'm counting by tens. 60 to 69 is 10 numbers, 70 to 79, 80 to 89, 90. So fill in as I'm filling in, 90 to 99, uh, 100 to 109, 110 to 119, uh, 120 to 129. So my scale on my frequency table was 60 to 129 but on my histogram so on the table it's 60 to 129 but on the histogram it's going to be 60 to 130 um, and I'm gonna tally my table values so my first value here is a 71 68, so I'm putting them into the correct 10 data point interval, 120, 119, 100, and tell me if I do it wrong tomorrow in class, 129, 75, 97, 123, 119, 93, 103, so I've done all of these, uh, 114, 98, 119, 121, 92, 102, 102, 126, which it makes, I'm going to cross that, 99, cross that one, 77, 125, 118, cross that one, and 100. So I have one in the 60 to 69, 3, 0, 5 tallies, 4, 5, and 6. And I like to get a total at the bottom of my table. So um, that 1 and 3 is 4, 9, 13, 18. Were there 24 people on the wrestling team, I'm hoping? One, two, three, four, five, six by four is 24. Yes, so I got all my data points. Um, I do that to make sure that I have the same number. It's my little check to make sure I have the same 24 data points on my frequency table that was originally in my original data. So you can see that I've gone ahead and labeled my graph. Um, instead of writing the full interval, which I could do, but it's hard to write you know, 60 to 69 in this little space and then get, you know, 70 to 79. So I chose not to do that. So I'm starting with just each one of my bars is the beginning point of the interval. So as I draw my histogram, which is a bar graph that's connected because it's usually data, it's in an interval um, no, um, uh, my data is grouped by intervals, not by individual categories, which is why it's a histogram. So I have one wrestler who's in the 60 to 69. So you should be using a ruler, please. Find a straight edge around your house or a ruler. I'm going to use my little ruler tool here that I have. And I'm going to draw a bar that's only one unit high for my 
sixty to sixty nine weight range and i have from seventy to seventy nine a bar that's three high remember they touch and nothing for my next height so nothing from eighty to ninety from ninety to ninety nine it should be five high um, 100 to 1, 109 is 4 high, and uh, 5 high from 110 to 119, and 6 high from 120 to 129. So notice there is not a bar drawn at the 130 point. These bars only go up two, but don't include that value of 130. Um, and a histogram, I was taught that histograms are shaded and they're shaded alternately. So I still continue to do that. So what do I mean by that? Because bar, gra uh, bar graphs are colored in. Histograms are not colored in. So I shade them alternately, like that. So the next one, which doesn't exist, don't put any line there from 80 to 90, would be shaded upward. So this one would be shaded in a downward motion. And this word in an upwards motion. It's how I was taught that they are alternately shaded. That's how you can tell the difference between them. Not solidly colored in, that's a bar graph. So I have all four of my 24 data points. I've labeled my x-axis weight. How am I keeping track of it? It's not kilograms, it's pounds. Number of wrestlers on my y-axis. And I've given it a title. Don't forget your title up here. So the next page, page six talks about solving a histogram problem. And you can see that Here's a, again, another interval um, question, which is why it's a histogram. And you can see that they're drawn a little bit differently. Uh, one showing the full interval scale and one drawn like I just did the histogram for the weights of the wrestlers with just the beginning Wait, I would like you to read over this page six and also read through page seven, which talks about um, line graphs or line plots. And you may have seen these before that have the X. Now we make dot plots and these would all be dots and stem and leaf plots and um, a double stem and leaf plot. So read over carefully page six and seven, and then I will go over some of this information in class tomorrow.